This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make it with Squarespace. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Ali. I'm a junior doctor working in Cambridge. And in this video, I wanna talk about how I use Google Sheets as a flashcard alternative for efficient studying. Now, if you've seen any of my previous study videos, you'll know that I love to go on about this thing called active recall, which basically just means testing yourself. It's the single most important efficient study technique ever, and there is a mountain of evidence supporting it. If you haven't heard of it, then please watch my videos. I'll link them up there and down there and stuff. Uh, but for this video, I'm gonna assume that you know that testing yourself is the single best way of getting really good marks in whatever you do. Now, when it comes to active recall, the most common method is to use flashcards, which makes sense. Flashcards are great. Uh, either physical flashcards, which I'm not a fan of, or apps like Anki and Quizlet, but even if you're using all these fancy apps, I still think there are a few drawbacks that flashcards have. Firstly, they take ages to make. Secondly, you end up with like a deck of hundreds, if not thousands of cards. And thirdly, it just becomes a real chore to get through them. And if you're anything like me and you haven't got the discipline to every single day, sit down and get through your 300 flashcards, I think they can become a bit of an annoyance rather than a help. So that's where the Google Sheets method comes in. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about exactly how I use Google Sheets as a flashcard alternative. And then later on, I'll talk about why I use Google Sheets as a flashcard alternative and all the various problems with flashcards and you know how I think Google Sheets solves that problem. But first, let's just talk about exactly what the method is and how it works. So we're gonna jump in and I'm gonna show you the Google Sheet that I used to revise for my final year medical school exams at Cambridge a few months ago. And I'll just kind of explain how it works. Okay, so here we have the Google Sheet and you can see along the bottom, I've got all the various different subjects. So abdomen, cardiovascular examination, the respiratory examination, neuro, endocrine, derm, gals, which is a musculoskeletal thing. It, it doesn't matter. The point is the subjects are along the bottom. And then the structure of the sheet is based on having questions in column A and answers in column B. And it's pretty much that simple. So let's look at my liver disease little category. And I've got quite loads of questions for myself, causes of hepatomegaly, which means a big liver. Um, what might be evidence of decompensation in liver disease? What investigations would you like? Complications of cirrhosis, classification of cirrhosis, causes of ascites, which means you know fluid in your abdomen. Uh, how do we treat ascites? I mean, all these various questions about liver disease. And the cool thing is I've written the answers in column B, but I have colored them in in font color white. So I've wrote them obviously with font color black so I could see what I was doing. But then once I've written the answer, I, you know, text color white, which means when I'm looking through the spreadsheet, I can't see any of the answers. And therefore this is active recall. When I see a question, I have to actively retrieve the information from my brain, which as we mentioned earlier, and in all of my previous study videos is the single most efficient study technique. So that's the whole point of this method. It's just about having questions and answers. And this is kind of like flashcards. It's like having, you know, the front of a, a flashcard as column A and the back of the flashcard as column B. But I just think this is a nicer way to look through a topic. And we'll talk more about exactly why I like this method later on. But that's pretty much the method. Questions in one column, answers in the other column. Also, you'll notice that I have color coded some of these. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, green means I'm pretty sure I know the answer or I knew the answer six months ago when I was doing these exams. Um, I don't think I can remember the answers to a lot of these, but you know, I'll do some spaced repetition and active recall of this particular spreadsheet later on. Yellow means I wasn't very good, but I, was, I sort of half knew the answer. And there's a few red ones down here. What are some problems following transplantation? Ah, um, that I clearly didn't know the answer at all. And sometimes I use orange for like, you know, a middle ground. And towards the end of the revision period where it came to exams, I was doing this thing where I would hide some columns that I didn't need, like, so between here and here, yeah. So there's quite a few green ones, but I don't need to go through all the green ones. So I can just hide these two um, these two columns and then you end up cleaning up your spreadsheet over time and then you know if you do want to have a session or an hour or two where you're just going through every single question you can just bash through them and this is the Google Sheets method for active recall I hope you enjoyed it now let's talk about exactly why I use this instead of flashcards okay so why do I use Google Sheets instead of flashcards uh, there's a few reasons firstly I really like the fact that putting it in a spreadsheet format gives you a systematic structure of reviewing your stuff. Flashcards are good because they tend to randomize the order in which questions are asked, which is good because it means that you're having to dredge up information that's in different topics. And there is this thing in efficient studying that, you know, interleaved practice that the more you learn from different categories, the more likely you are to remember it. But I'm not a massive fan of that, especially within medicine and a lot of other subjects where the sort of recall you're gonna be asked to do is gonna be systematic. Like let's say I see a patient who has a stoma 
uh, in their abdomen, I'm going to be asked questions about the stoma. They might ask me what the complications of stomas are, like the question over here. Uh, they might ask me about different indications for a stoma. They might ask me what a Hartman's procedure is. This all stuff related to a stoma. Whereas if I had these in an Anki or Quizlet deck, then I might get a question about what are the complications of stoma. And then the next question would be, how do patients with autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease present? And the next question might be, what are the complications following a liver transplant? I mean, it's, it's good to have this knowledge off the top of your head, but I think I prefer the systematic approach where I can have, you know, this mental model of stomas and just kind of know everything about them in one place and actively revise that one topic at a time, rather than just getting a scattergun of different questions about various problems in the abdomen. Secondly, I really like how this lets me see at a glance exactly where the holes in my knowledge are. With something like Anki and Quizlet, I have to trust that their spaced repetition algorithm is going to flag up the things that I don't know. And often I'll have to go through 100 cards where I'm pretty sure I know like 80 of them and it's only 20 of them that I'm really struggling with. Whereas in this, I have color coded it myself. Stuff that I am put in red means that last time I tested myself on this, I didn't know how to do it. So that's the stuff I'm going to do first. And if I just scroll through the abdo exam, I see there's quite a few red, yellows and oranges. So I'm going to spend some time on this today. And I don't think, oh yeah, cardio exam, there's more green and yellow here. There's a few reds, so I'd be looking at these reds. And this becomes a very quick way of reviewing questions. I'm not a fan of reviewing notes, obviously, because that's not efficient, that's passive, it's just reading information. I'm a big fan of active recall, and this makes it super easy to see where the holes in my knowledge are. Thirdly, I think the Google Sheets method makes it slightly easier to work together with friends. So if you've seen any of my previous study with me videos from a few months ago, when my friends and I were preparing for our med school exams, we'd often have like sessions where I'd put up the Google Sheet on my big monitor, uh, zoom the font size in, and we'd kind of sit there and work through the questions one at a time. That is possible with flashcards. I have done it in the past with flashcards, but I just found that having tried both of them, it was it was kind of nicer to just go through a spreadsheet and be like one by one, next, 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 rather than trust that random flashcards would pop up in the right order. And finally, the reason I prefer Google Sheets to flashcards is because flashcards become an absolute burden, like I mentioned at the start of the video. You see that you've got 150 flashcards to review that day, and it just sucks all the enjoyment out of learning. And yeah, I know you can set them so you only review 20 at a time, but then sometimes you want to change that amount and sometimes you want to work more and then you have to actively go into the options and change that up, blah, 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 all this stuff. Essentially, Google Sheets just makes it a super low commitment thing to sit down and study. Even if I have five or 10 minutes, I can just go open Google Sheets, find the things that are read and actively try and recall them and then look up the answers or Google or Wikipedia or even look at a textbook for the stuff that I don't remember. And that, you know, even if I have five or 10 minutes, that will work. Whereas for a flashcard, yeah, it does work if you just have a few minutes at a time, but I often found when I was using flashcards intensively in first and second year that unless I had like an hour or two to sit down and do my flashcards, I, I used to treat it as such a big deal that I ended up not reviewing them very often. So I like the fact that Google Sheets is low commitment. You can do it as little or as much as you want. That's just kind of nice. It's kind of nice going through them. And there's that little uh, gamification element of it as well, where once once you rec recall something well, then you mark it as yellow, or you mark it as green, and it gives you that little burst of endorphins that make you feel good about studying overall. So yeah, if I have some spare time and I've got exams coming up, I just bash open Google Sheets on my iPhone or iPad or laptop or even a random browser, and it just works. It's just pretty magical. Finally, I just want to end by addressing a question that I've had from loads of people over the last year or so that I've sort of mentioned this Google Sheets thing, and people always ask, what do you make a flashcard for, and what do you use your Google Sheet for? And I really don't have that distinct uh, categorization. In general, if I was to come up with a rule of thumb, I prefer flashcards for very, very, very isolated facts. So for example, what is the dose of coamoxiclav for, I don't know, a community acquired pneumonia? And it would be uh, 625 milligrams four times a day, or three times a day or whatever. You know, it's an isolated fact. What type of virus is a flavivirus? It's a double-stranded DNA, RNA virus that does blah, blah, blah. You know, d discrete isolated facts. I kind of prefer Google Sheets for more general understanding concepts. I said in one of my previous videos that I quite like the phrase, what's the deal with polymalgia rheumatica? It's a bad question to put on a flashcard because if you look at the evidence surrounding flashcards, uh, people always say that it's better to have, you know, a distinct fact, whereas just explain polymalgia rheumatica is a very broad open-ended question. I think that's the sort of thing that I like putting in my Google Sheet because if I don't know what it is, I'll just Google it. And I'm on the computer anyway, because I'm going through my Google Sheet. So I'll just Google it, find out what it is, and then you know, either write some of it down on my, sheet, on my sheet, or just make a mental note in my head to repeat that information, to rehearse it, to active recall it. And then I can mark that particular box as yellow. Another question people often ask is, do you write out your whole answers in full in the flashcard or in the Google Sheet? And the answer is sometimes. 
if it's a simple if it's a simple thing like what's the differential for a aortic stenosis i.e an ingestion systolic murmur there's just four points here hocm vsd aortic sclerosis and aortic floor murmur, floor murmur at least at the medical student final level um only four things i can write four things in down in my little spreadsheet column but if the question was explain polymyalgia rheumatica i probably wouldn't write down anything in the column because i would trust that if i don't know what it is if i can't explain it to myself in my head i'll just google it and then I'll be able to explain it. So a lot of the time, I think we can waste a lot of time making the flashcards, but especially for stuff like medicine where every single thing is just to Google away, there's almost no point in adding tons of information and duplicating that information and making your own notes because you can just Google it if you don't know what the answer is. So yeah, hopefully that clarifies those two points. Um, I don't really have that distinctive categorization between flashcards and sheets, but I kind of prefer Google Sheets for more general concepts and flashcards for more distinct facts, even though there's a lot of overlap. Um, and secondly, I sometimes don't write out the answers in the column at all if I can just Google it. So yeah, I hope you found this video useful. We've talked about why I use Google Sheets. We've talked about how I use Google Sheets. It's pretty much the same as flashcards, but I think the Google Sheet method addresses some of the issues that I personally have found with flashcards. And that's a point that I wanna end on. This is just what works for me. This thing about Google Sheets being better than flashcards is obviously not gospel truth. The only gospel truth in this whole study tips stuff is active recall and spaced repetition. In fact, it's better than gospel truth because there is a mountain of evidence supporting it. Controversial. Um, active recall, spaced repetition, state things, also things like elaborative encoding and interleaved practice. You can find out more if you read the book, Make It Stick, but I'll be working on videos over those on those over time. Um, but yeah, this is just like a personal preference thing. I'm making this video because a lot of people have asked about it. I prefer Google Sheets to flashcards for some things. That's not to say it works for everyone. Let's try it out, see if you like it. And if it works for you, then fantastic. I just want to say that this video is very kindly sponsored by Squarespace. You've probably heard of them. They are a website design and hosting and you know content platform that makes it super easy for anyone to set up a website. I've been making websites for the last 12 years of my life. I've been paid to make websites. I've made websites for my businesses that have generated six figures in revenue. And I've used all sorts of different platforms over the years. And now Squarespace is the one that I default to if I ever need to make a website. Just because, firstly, it's really easy to get set up because you know getting started is the, the hardest part of actually making a website. And secondly, it's quite feasible for non-technical people to update the website and things like that. So if I'm making a website for an organization that doesn't have coders working for them, they can use Squarespace to update their content quite easily. And thirdly, because I'm a web designer myself and because I know coding and stuff, I can still like adapt Squarespace to whatever, pretty much whatever I wanna do. And it just makes it so easy and it's reasonably priced and their support is really good. You can just message them at any hour of the day and they get back to you within a timely fashion. So yeah, thank you Squarespace for making this video possible. And if you're thinking of using Squarespace to make a website, which you should, there'll be a coupon in the description below that you can check out. Um, yeah, that's, that's all I want to say. So <laughs> thanks very much for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, then please consider doing so. Have a lovely day and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.